Good morning, everybody. This is Jake Leachko. It's very early in the morning. It's about 5.20. And, oops. Oh, Mia. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Mia is behind me. It's 5.20 in the morning. We're making a, a trip uh, to the Bay Area. So um, I decided, you know, to come on early. I'm already taking my coffee here, so the kids are still preparing uh, to go, but um, I thought we'll do the gospel commentary already so that um, at least uh, we don't neglect it for you today. Okay, the gospel comes from, uh, still from St. Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. It's a pretty long gospel, so um, bear with me. Um, so I tried to read it from my uh, little um, phone here. Okay, Jesus told his disciples a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. Okay, I think, let's just paraphrase it. This is the parable where our Lord goes out, where the, the landowner goes out to hire laborers for his, his vineyard. And so he hires them and tells them, okay, I promise you I'm going to give you, um, you know, my usual day's wage, right? Whatever is the wage for a whole day's work, I'll give that to you. And then an hour later, he goes out, he finds more laborers and invites them also. Hey, come, you know, come work in my vineyard. Why are you here? Why are you just in the marketplace? Or why are you just here idle, not doing anything, right? Uh, so, oh, they said, because nobody hired us. Okay, so I'll hire you. Come, go work in my vineyard. Okay, so they go work in his vineyard. And then an hour later, he goes out again and finds more people in other places. And he tells them, come, I work in my vineyard. What are you all doing here, uh, doing nothing? He says, so come, come and, uh, and work in my vineyard. So um, they go. They, they, they obey, uh, they follow the uh, landowner and they go. So this happens every hour like that, every time that the uh, landowner goes out, until the last hour already, the 11th hour, so-called, right? That must be just, you know, an hour before the day ends. And he goes out again and still finds people and says, Hey, come, come to the vineyard and work. And I will give you also a day's wage. So later, uh, when the day was over, he goes out to start paying them their wage, as he promised them, right? But he promised everybody the same wage, which is equivalent to the day's wage. So the people who came before, the, first, the ones who were first hired said, hey, that's unfair. How come he's paying them the same way he paid us? Our Lord said, well, the first will be last and the last will be first. In other words, uh, our, the landowner paid them the same, paid them the same wage, whatever um, time they worked. What does this uh, parable, how does this parable relate to our lives as Catholics? This parable tells us about how our Lord calls us to work in his vineyard, no matter what time of our lives he might have called us in. Some people are called to work for God when they're young. Some people when they're middle-aged. Some people when they're older. Every one of us is called by God to work in His vineyard. What is His vineyard? It's, it's this world where He created us, where He put us to, to practice our faith in. And He called us to work in in this vineyard of his, in different times of our lives, right? in different times of our lives, he has called each one of us, by virtue of our baptism, he has called each one of us to work in his vineyard, to make apostles uh, out of others that he has also called in his vineyard. He said, come follow me. And he's also, he also said, make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? He has called each and every one of us to work in his vineyard. 
And he promised us the same reward. What is that reward? Heaven. Heaven is the reward for our hard work. Heaven is the reward for our fidelity. Heaven is the reward for our loyalty to work for our landowner, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. He called us in this vineyard to be instruments. He did not call us because we are the smartest, because we are the handsomest, the prettiest, because we are the most talented. No, our Lord called us wherever He found us and however He found us. Same way as those workers that He called from the marketplace, from the street corners or wherever they found them. He found them. They, he called them the way they, they were with all their defects, with all their imperfections, with their talents as well, yeah. But God called us and calls us and uses both our talents and our defects, our imperfections, in order uh, to employ them in His work of sanctifying other souls, sanctifying uh, people around us. He wants to use us as instruments for the apostolate. He wants to use us as instruments. And in the end, it's not really us doing the work, but God's grace, God's own grace working on souls. He is the one who converts people. He is the one who changes lives. He is the one who influences minds. He is the one who uh, brings a change of heart to people. Not us, but we can be instruments. We can be the laborers. It is God who brings the fruit in souls. So, um, what does this tell us? What does this tell us? You know, this is really a definition of purpose. Many of us sometimes in our lives struggle to find meaning for our lives. We struggle to find a purpose as to why we are on this earth, why we are in that profession, why we are in this work, why we married this woman, why we have these children, why we are in this neighborhood, why are we experiencing this or that situation. Sometimes we struggle to find a reason and a purpose. Well, here is a reason. Here is a purpose. God is calling you to be an instrument for his apostolate to work in the environment where he has found you and where he has put you. He is using you and I as an instrument to spread his word. He is using you and I to give good example to people around us about how to live our faith faithfully, how to live it in an outstanding manner and how to spread the word to others. So let's ask ourselves, you know, how am I fulfilling my role as an instrument of God to do apostolate to those around me? How am I uh, showing that good example? You know, we don't have to be all learned. We don't have to be all um, uh, knowing, uh, you know, uh, every point in the catechism or, or every aspect of doctrine of our faith. It's good if we can. And those of us, those of us who are given the talent and the ability to uh, expand our knowledge about everything we can learn about our faith. It is an obligation for us to do that. But um, for the most part, uh, we don't go around like preachers, um, you know, uh, proclaiming the Word of God as preachers do. For most of us, it's just the testimony of our lives. It's just a good example that we provide other people at work by working very well at home by being a good parent, being a good uh, brother or sister, in society by being a good citizen, you know, and, and, and imbuing, informing, infusing our environment with our faith in God, in the way that we live our lives. The example that we give others is testimony enough, is apostolate enough. And God wants us to do that. God is calling us to do that. God has told us to come, follow me, and make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So today, perhaps, let us make an effort, at least today and in the coming days, 
to really give good example, to really be a, a witness to others about how we are following Jesus, about how we love God, and about how we are living up to our faith. That's it for now, folks. I'll see you again tomorrow. I'm sorry it's a little early today, but tomorrow hopefully it should be at 7 o'clock in the morning. Have a good day. Oh, and please pray for a safe trip for us today. Thank you. Bye.